Погнали. So, welcome, my dear friends. Um, we'll just start smoothly, and if people approach, they will approach. As today is such a, I think it's a wonderful weather that the clouds are finally coming, and we can enjoy a little bit <laughs> uh, less sun and more freshness. Well, today we're gonna continue and go deeper into the topic of amanita. I'm gonna speak today here, let's say, uh, even deeper practically about how we can use um, the mushroom and the great spirit in our work and I'll try to share more and more such uh, effective basic things and skills and techniques on which you can focus your consciousness when you're working with Amanita. So if, um, before we're gonna start into the details, could uh, you please share, raise your hand who tried Amanita Muscaria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. So we have exactly 50-50 <laughs> who tried it and didn't try it. This is wonderful because um, when uh, we have people who have experience, this allows us uh, to, let's say, uh, go deeper into the topics uh, which uh, might be inspiring for the new ones. Um, so first of all, um, I would say uh, we can uh, start uh, with partly question and answers or let's say the topics that are the most interesting for you to discover and based uh, on what is interesting for you we're gonna structure and share more detailed knowledge so um, mm, could you please share uh, especially uh, first we'll go by the people who haven't tried and then uh, by people who have tried so by everybody who hasn't tried could you please share um, what have you heard about the mushroom what do you want to know and discover about it and uh, which things you want to let's say achieve by using any type of medicine plants hmm? let's go step by step um okay so i listen to a lot of terence mckenna Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I really like it, I like his experiences with mushrooms. And even without taking mushrooms, I can connect with some things that he talks about spirits. Uh, but actually, it's it's because of um, I have some psychic abilities, mm -hmm. like extrasensory perception normally. Mm -hmm. So I don't take any plants. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, um, it's always coming, everybody's always offering and always suggesting that I take. And I feel confused about it. Okay, so you never tried any psychedelic plants, but there's something like I all have, around. Have. Like mm -hmm. I've done mushrooms once, mm -hmm. eight years ago or something. Eight years. Yeah, maybe and, more, like and, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And how was the experience? Was it deep? Uh, or? Yeah, a little bit. You know, it's really hard to tell because we were also smoking so much weed. Uh, okay. And then we got like pretty drunk afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some whiskey. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was interesting because, uh, like, I, I took acid also around that time. So whenever I've been on a trip, mm -hmm. I write things down or I draw stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little bit aware that my perception at that point of time was something different mm -hmm. um i used to smoke a lot of weed and i love it very much but now it's been about five six years that i stop everything because i have too many dreams visions spirit communication telepathy many things like that you know mm -hmm. experience all the, eight, the psychic senses just normally so so I don't know if this is something that's like medicine for me or it's poison for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Medicine is for everybody, medicine. Chemistry is poison for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Very simple. But thank you, okay. I, I will uh, touch the topic of 
let's say, the difference of psychedelic mushrooms and Amanita mushrooms and uh, the aspect on how you should, uh, let's say, use them or get connected. Because uh, there should be no fear towards nature. There should be a, a fear only exists inside of the head towards any new experience. And uh, most important is just to know how to organize for yourself any new experience uh, connected with any, not only medicine plan, but any life experience. As typically when there's some fear inside, it usually means there are the answers. Mm. That is how the brain works. It's a self-defending system which uh, doesn't want for the consciousness to get the freedom. Um, it doesn't want to give the opportunity for the soul to control the mind because uh, if the soul will be doing that, the mind will have to work a lot more. It will have to always uh, to do what the consciousness says and decides. But the function of the brain, it's uh, halfway automatic. If you pay attention, then with our soul, we're actually more playing through our body. We're not controlling our body. We're not thinking how we breathe. We're not thinking how we, let's say, move the muscles when we smile or when we're moving the body. We're not thinking uh, that we're right now like, <laughs> uh, that our blood is flowing like through 20 kilometer long blood veins. We're not doing that. We're just sitting like in a theater observing this life thinking we're controlling it so for that reason it's very important to understand that with our soul we don't have the control over the body if a human would have control over his body he would be enlightenment and he could stay and live here how long he wants if you cannot do that well <laughs> continue your spiritual work because the brain it's a self you can say a very wise self you can say a self-defending, self-developing system. And until the consciousness won't hack it, the brain will always the person, the soul. So it's a part of a very important spiritual game. Because if the goal was to have full consciousness control, then um, uh, the brain, let's say, would be structured in a different way. But the beauty about any game or life form that you have to understand it, but not fully. You have to enjoy what is important, but not to waste your time on things which are not so important for the experience in this physical world. And in physical world, the experience of constantly thinking to breathe <laughs> or constantly thinking that you have to move the muscles or the blood veins, oh, blood, that is not important. But what is important is truly the experience that we get. So, like in a very good computer game, uh, when a person sits down at the laptop and starts to play, he knows he's playing a game to get experience. But somehow, when uh, we come here to play with our souls through this avatar, we forget that it's a game. <laughs> and people get lost. But when you keep on mind the fundament of the freedom, it brings very great inspiration in trying to hack, in trying to go deep, because it's possible to reprogram everything. And exactly, Amanita can assist us very nicely to reprogram our brain, reprogram our, let's say, aspect uh, of our perception of reality. And when we do that, magic happens, because everything around is just you. And your perception if uh, you perceive reality the way how you feel it adapts to that if uh, um, everything around just reflects reflects not only the thoughts but reflects first of all the feeling inside you feel happy <laughs> everybody feels happy around and on the opposite you feel sad inside even if you try to fake your smile well Nobody will feel it. Everybody will see that on the inside, your vibration is low. So, putting simple, everything is really easy. Once you get the, ha the understanding that your soul controls and creates the most important vibration through the body, and that everything around all of this energy, it totally obeys our feeling inside. Not our thoughts, but our feeling inside. So if you want to change your reality, don't focus only on changing your thoughts. Focus 
on changing your feelings. Focus on trying to find out such things and answers that you would uh, fi make such conclusions which would change your feeling inside towards reality. In a very simple way, remember when you have hard situations, like the change happens only when you make a conclusion upon the experience. Mm. If you don't make the conclusion, it becomes a rabbit hole. You know, like it just goes round and round and round. So always remember, you want a new reality, make more conclusions. If you want to move faster, well, analyze. Analyze your feelings, analyze your life and make conclusions. If you don't make a conclusion, you'll stay here in the eternal <laughs> circle where you are. And only when you make a conclusion, it will break. Because with a new conclusion, you make a step out. And with every new step out that you make, everything changes. So, it brings back everything to us. Our consciousness and our soul who plays through the body. You learn to do that, you will learn to control reality. If you don't learn to control like, your mind and your body, everybody will stay a slave and die like everybody dies. <laughs> so, life is a choice. Death is a choice. This is the free will that is given to every person. And until the person thinks that he doesn't have a choice, he doesn't have a choice. <laughs> and until uh, a person believes and sees the freedom that is accessible to any of us, well, the freedom is hidden. <laughs> so step by step, with the work with Amanita, will I inspire everybody to go deeper to the soul. So you would see how strong you are and that your body belongs to you. Your life belongs to you. This reality belongs to you. But it belongs to you equally on how much you believe that it belongs to you. And actually that's why all of the spiritual practices, they step by step uh, train you for patience and they train you for literally for patience that you would be able to expand your consciousness that when the freedom will be given to you, you won't be afraid of it. So yes, step by step, overcoming the fear, you get the control over your reality. So I inspire everybody to have such a, you know, a provocative rebel attitude towards fear. You feel fear, imagine that it's like green light. Green light that your brain is showing you, yes, that is where the answer is. Yes, you're acting correct, that's why I'm blocking you. That's why I'm creating a fear you. That's why I try to push you to the side. But every time when you see that fear and you focus it and follow it till the end, you get a great discovery that actually the fear <laughs> is just an illusion. And once you step through it, you open up something very important. In your perception of life, you make a new conclusion. You open new energies. And eventually, you just, boom, jump through and into the new reality simply because you're happy. Every time when you, uh, every time when you overcome, or we overcome ourselves, we feel satisfied. Through satisfaction, we give ourselves happiness. And when a soul has happiness inside of the body, it generates such a tremendous amount of energy that things start to happen. So that's why everybody says, focus on your own happiness, because this really generates a very, very, very strong flow of energy, because the soul controls the body. <laughs> Eventually, the soul gives the energy to the body. And if you open your soul and allow this energy to stream through the body, magic happens. And on the opposite, you can do many, many things. But if your soul is not happy, <laughs> you, it's very hard to control this energy. It's very hard to use it. It's very hard to generate it. And this is what happens uh, in, let's say, the majority of time uh, in the world where we used to live, like in the West. That people act so much, they're doing so many correct things, uh, and yet so few people are happy, so few people have their free time, have their health, but yet everybody are doing the correct thing in their mind. But when you ignore your feeling of happiness, 
you have no power at all because you don't want to give yourself the power you don't want with your soul to allow yourself to develop in the fields in the games in the illusions which are not connected with you so that's why uh, for them um, like most important what I want to share with this that all of the medicine plants are here to assist us to understand who we are what is happiness to us what we want because when it's for the body uh, for the soul clear what I want to play it becomes very simple and until the person hasn't simplified for himself his own path his own soul it's very easy to manipulate through the brain because the brain it's logical it's emotional but it's all created to manipulate us and as uh, this is a carrying box of all of our experience <laughs> you perfectly understand that it has the choice of the variety of using all of the things that it knows about us in a game against us so i highly recommend to start to make and to reprogram that your brain would become your friend and if he would become your alliance rather than uh, your enemy and uh, that perception which always tries to limit and block you so yes all of that is possible um oh, okay let's try to um as i will listen to the questions we will always make such let's say a flow of answers so um Please share. Is, a, is there something uh, specific um, that uh, have you tried plant medicines? Have you worked with mushrooms? And um, which things um, are curious for you about the Manita Muscaria? Yeah, I think primarily I'm wondering which kind of uh, which type of spirit you can actually encounter when taking this drug. Mm -hmm. For example, when I take LSD. <laughs> It usually feels like it's a very clean, rational space, like you can feel it's made by human. So there's no, mm -hmm. like it's very good to understand patterns and mathematical connections and mm -hmm. patterns in society and stuff or nature. But it doesn't for me have the spiritual content. Same for uh, cannabis, yeah, that's maybe mixed, but. Like when I take mushrooms or ayahuasca or DMT, the very specific kind of entities there, right? mm -hmm. Counter, which might be in the background or guiding me, but they're very specific. Like every type of mushroom mm -hmm. has like a very specific entity there with just very different properties. Yeah, I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. how this might look. Wonderful. Well, um, I can share you such interesting comments about uh, the kingdom of mushrooms. Uh, people forget that uh, in the world there are three kingdoms of life form. First is plant-based, second is um, uh, living-based. In other words, all of the plants, one side, on the other, all of the living beings that are walking, that are breathing, that are flying. But there's something in the middle, a kingdom that we always forget. This kingdom has is so big and is so important uh, that it was consciously hidden you can say from science of the 20th century because this ki kingdom uh, is literally the bridge between uh, the plant and the living which unites the wisdom of the whole planet and that is the mushroom kingdom mushrooms are literally the oldest type of life form existed on our planet it was before the plants it was before the living beings and that's why here uh, as a you could say energy or let's say as a being on our planet it is the most ancient one and in this kingdom currently we know about 210,000 I think something thousand of type of mushrooms altogether there's more than 450,000 types of mushrooms you understand uh, like there are so many plants that's how many animals or insects the same about mushrooms and by them the kingdom it's so interesting because uh, many of the mushrooms literally develop to adapt through to a specific type or species in other words some mushrooms uh, have developed literally just to let's say uh, 
to make their connection through specific animals. Uh, I'll give an example that some mushrooms are psychedelic for deers, but this, uh, let's say, psychedelic mushrooms won't be psychedelic for a human. It won't be psychedelic for pigs or alone like wild hogs, but literally only for deers. And there are specific mushrooms which develop for a species. And includingly, like psychedelic mushrooms, so like the classical psilocybin, it is interesting that some of them have only impact on the human mind. And that's it. Putting simple, the species just developed literally just to be connected <laughs> with the humans. And uh, what happens when we get our first experience with uh, plant-based medicine, especially mushrooms, then we get the opportunity to see easily how everything is interconnected. You shared about DMT. DMT it's a very easy and natural structure which you can find like everywhere from plants to stone to wood. It's a very simple um, chemical um, structure and it's so simple that um, um, that it's hard to find it in a way that you could consume it. <laughs> but it's everywhere. So putting simple when we take mushrooms, when we open our perception, we can see that we uh, have a feeling that we're connected with everything. We, have, uh, we can see that energy, we can feel the trees, we can feel everything. Because the structure is one, and mushrooms are literally the ones that unite the plants and the living. So, in other words, um, the mushrooms give you the opportunity to get very deeply connected and to see this connection as with plants, so and with the living beings. Uh, and uh, through this, uh, when a person uh, is the mushrooms, that's why he can see the energies, he can uh, feel how as if everything around is a part of him, because everything has DMT. And the mushrooms, they play a very important role in balancing out this the whole life form. Because inside of every human body, there are spores of mushrooms. As you know, the same as cancer and etc. It's just literally the same, um, you can say, uh, type of, a different type of mushrooms. Uh, but the thing is that inside of every human, there are spores of mushrooms, which can open up and destroy the body, you know, like as cancer. But the question is why it happens. Yeah. And this, uh, uh, everything is so geniusly connected that even though this is our body, but it's partly autonomous. Secondly, in our body, we have uh, the opportunity on how to save us or how to destroy us. And uh, the aspect why it's so important to focus on happiness of the soul, that happiness of the soul gives the power over the body. Suffering of the soul guides towards self-destruction. You know, in Ayurveda, it's a very, very deep science which shows and tells that uh, every, let's say, every spiritual lesson, every feeling that we're living through inside reflects through our body. And if we ignore the pain of our soul, then our soul always reflects it through the body. This is our main mirror of our soul. And uh, how all of the sicknesses uh, and how people create such a process of self-destruction or get cancer and etc. Typically it works that when a person mm, feels pain, he doesn't agree to what is happening around, but still he closes his mouth and does, let's say, what the system makes him or what everybody are doing. Eventually the person uh, uh, let's say, close his mouth and he keeps this energy inside. He pushes down the feelings, controlling them with their rational logic. And through that, this pain, it doesn't disappear. Usually, when you bring down the pain and you ignore it, it creates a vibration in a specific part of the body. If you ignore this pain, you get a sickness. If you ignore, let's say, the sickness that you got, it becomes a chronic sickness. So imagine that all of the body is just the reflection of the feeling of the soul inside. If you feel sad, if you are not satisfied, 
if you don't like yourself the actions that you do the vibration of the soul starts to self-destruct the body because first of all it sends the impact to understand what is right now happening with what your soul doesn't agree but if the mind is developed and there's no connection with the understanding of the feeling then eventually all of this guides the person towards sicknesses then chronic sicknesses and then eventually to death so of that reason it is uh, so cool to understand that uh, uh, all we need to do is um, uh, to have it clear what does our soul want if you uh, want to heal yourself from anything all you have to do is to make your soul feel happy and through this uh, connection everything changes you feel happy everybody feels happy you feel the energy and you want to live you give your body the energy to live and to develop and uh, even though that a person might have cancer uh, if he feels happy and he finds the answer where he was lying to himself he can do the magic because the magic of everybody belongs to the soul that is in this body if the soul is tired and it doesn't want to play here it just wants to leave and it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter what the person might be telling you if he's tired on the inside even though if, uh, you can heal the body he will still die he will still go away because it's his choice people are just afraid of that people are just afraid to support this transforming especially in the west <laughs> in the west everybody are afraid of that and uh, through this fear people uh, uh, don't uh, analyze the whole simple picture about the game and maybe a one more important comment to understand why this is happening that in the 20th century in science and medicine they put it away a very important word without this word no real healing where will ever happen and every person will stay stupid in understanding how everything works imagine that in the 20th century they took away the word soul like in science there's no soul when you come to a doctor he looks at you there's no soul in the eyes of the doctor in you because if he will look at you that you have an avatar and you have a soul <laughs> then he will get fired or executed by other doctors because the doctors were fooled in the beginning of the 20th century by the pharmaceutical industry which was created by the oil industry and eventually the difference between modern doctors and all of the healers through all of the history that uh, shamans, druids, uh, ayurvedic doctors, everybody everybody knows that every sickness comes because of the soul and if you don't have a soul in medicine you have in front of you a sick person who usually has a lot of pain inside who doesn't know how to solve it he doesn't know how to heal you and uh, he's just making work for the money and eventually he is not provided the tools to heal you because he doesn't know the fundament if for the healer there's no soul in the body he just heals the avatar and the avatar is just a reflection of what is on the inside and that's why all of people doesn't matter how in the 20th century developed medicine everybody are sick and becoming more sick and doctors are sick people who need help but it's especially done that sick people would heal normal people so they would also get sick because a healer can only share what he has inside he cannot share nothing except what he feels inside so that's why true healing it always happens with the soul if you heal your soul and you help other person to open up your uh, his soul this will change everything but if you don't heal the soul it doesn't matter how much you will heal the body you will get even more sick so that's why modern times don't go to a doctor who is fat ugly alcoholic just look and if you don't have a feeling connection don't even bother trust me don't even bother you will gonna get 
more sick and more problems by visiting him because just look at him look at his face look at his body how he is look at feel and imagine that what he's sharing this is who you will become if you listen to him so very consciously choose people who heal you if the person is fat ugly and etc it doesn't matter if he is a doctor he will just share that what he has on the inside so that's why he always look uh, on the avatar if the avatar is healthy if the eyes are bright if uh, the mind is clear then it means on inside there's peace and this peace and this uh, connection will be opened by you because when somebody opens the soul he can help the other person also to open it up and through this true magic happens because the body belongs to the soul and it doesn't matter if the person doesn't understand it most important if the soul feels happy the body will change and with happiness it's very easy to get that energy to navigate yourself in finding all answers that you desire so the happiness of you is the whole secret how you can get control over your body heal yourself from any disease and eventually learn to control the surrounding reality as everything is just a mirror of the soul that's it so i hope uh, it was a small such deeper step into understanding how the mushrooms um, how they can assist us in this interesting game of self-discovery and uh, of course most important uh, that in understanding this game that's why they blocked in the 20th century everything which would allow the person to see this experience that he's not the body that he's the soul all of the psychedelic experience gives you a practical way of stepping out and stop associating yourself just with the body here we have many people which have this wisdom but back in the prison where all people live <laughs> uh, they are they don't know that they're very afraid of that and they're just uh, were grown up in a very harsh let's say mindset uh, where they're just afraid they don't have the powers they don't have the energies they don't have the wisdom and then don't have the guts to do what they want so that's why very few people are here living in freedom in happiness in search and so many people still need that spiritual experience of suffering well because it's Kali Yuga <laughs> we need to respect many souls came here for the hardcore experience not for the beauty but for the hardcore experience this is the specialty of this era so let's respect everybody who wants suffering let's respect everybody who wants some uh, hardcore pain and some wars and some diseases because uh, this is the game that the soul wants to play until they won't suffer enough it seems it doesn't want to enjoy well let it suffer i respect that because this is freedom the true freedom is to allow everybody and everything to experience what they want because eventually it's just experience there's no good there's no bad it's just a game because for god it's all the same so let's understand the this interesting flow that we're in control and um, take it in and use the freedom that is given to us for the benefit of us and stop thinking that somebody can control our reality except our own personal soul mm -hmm. well please is there any curiosity and what uh, interesting things um, um, let's say guided your soul towards the topic of amanita and mushrooms so i'm most interested in microdosing mm -hmm. for medical like, uh, enhancing reasons and also for the mind enhancing reasons mm -hmm. but uh, not for the let's say psychedelic experience mm -hmm. results, because i've tried the lot Thing, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, microdosing only, and mm -hmm. uh, it had a very nice effect of uh, enhanced uh, thinking capabilities, of enhanced mood. So I'm thinking about uh, whether uh, this mushroom could also be used for microdosing. 
wonderful yes uh, with joy I'll answer this that in truly if you want to get connected uh, with any medicine plant uh, is best of all to use it in Ayurvedic way like Ayurveda it's literally just you choose uh, you understand what is the problem you choose the plant that will help you and you use it on a daily basis this daily basis is literally our body it's like it's not only an avatar it's so genius that whatever we put inside of our body it becomes us no like literally you eat a lot of uh, i don't know bananas <laughs> you're gonna get connected with the banana well you literally like energy flow you eat a lot of meat depending which type of meat you're gonna get connected to that energy our body uh, it works that here it dissolves but here it transforms and whatever we eat, first of all, it has the impact on our antenna. Our mind is an antenna. And it always creates the vibration and it always catches the vibration. So if you want, uh, let's say, to create um, that reality which you desire, it's important to increase your vibration towards that reality where you want to be. Putting simple, if you drink alcohol, eat chemistry drugs or ke chemistry medicine, it will always bring you down. Which means lower vibration spirits will get connected to you. Lower vibration spirits will suck the energy from you. They will take away uh, your life energy. They will take away your health. They will uh, take everything away. And this is just how works everything made from chemistry. And on the other hand, if you use so from pure nature, it will uh, only give you energy, it will only give you support, it will only assist uh, you to get uh, what you need and what you don't need, your body will let it go. So using any type of plant medicine in a microdosing way is the most effective way in a step-by-step -step safe form to get the whole understanding what can this plant do for us. So microdosing uh, mushrooms is one of the most wisest ways of learning to control your own possibilities and capacities. If you use a lot of mushrooms, you always get a journey. This is a moment when the mushroom gets connected with our avatar, including our mind. For the spirit of the mushroom, it's a very interesting um, also experience because um, uh, many of them haven't been in a human form and when you eat the mushrooms uh, it's like an exchange because um, on one hand they provide you their capacity and the power of vision and their energetic support around but for them it's really interesting to be in a human body form and just to experience what it means like to feel to walk <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, like when people uh, sometimes see mushrooms, they get this experience as if they're like children. <laughs> you know, all of this, oh, this is so interesting. <laughs> oh, da, da. <laughs> and th this, in truth, is partly the mushrooms. The mushroom spirit is like, oh, I can't, oh, ho, ho. <laughs> so interesting. <laughs> and this this what really like uh, increases and gets connected um, <laughs> the soul with the body because uh, we, f we forget what a gift this is <laughs> uh, but the mushroom it really shows how unbelievable <laughs> we are and how in truth deeply it all is connected so that's why it's very cool to understand uh, that this is a walking by a computer our brain it's an antenna whatever you put inside you get the opportunity with your antenna to get connected with higher vibrations or lower vibrations and with what you connect that is what your body is uh, like streams through the body and creates the reality so if you are always drinking alcohol or you're with uh, people who are i don't know connected with the matrix with finances you know the ones uh, who are strong in their minds but they have no idea how to open their souls. Then uh, these are literally demons. Uh, and uh, a demon is a person uh, who doesn't have the control with his soul over his body. And that through his mind, lower vibration spirits can get control over his avatar. You know, like I'll give a simple example. Uh, not everybody saw The Matrix. 
and there they show quite nicely that any person who is unconscious can be used by the system that all of the uh, let's say normal people can be abused by some kind of energy which just can just teleport through them and use their body namaste yeah please join us and eventually this all happens um, in the same way that if the soul is not controlling the body then somebody else is controlling the body the actions and the reality of a human and the why this kali yuga is called such a demonic because the demons they control humans through the brain through logic and emotions and a true human he uh, follows his soul and when the soul controls the body then there's uh, no animal instincts there's no fear there's no um, let's say anger there's no anxiety because the soul it's internal the soul has everything the soul is not afraid but the brain is afraid the brain is controlling the body and is connected with this physical world and that's why all of the animal instincts uh, uh, go through the brain so the brain uh, has uh, two main tools of manipulation first it's logic and second it's emotions uh, when we give a, I'll give an example we come back home in the evening uh, we know for uh, like what we have to do let's say here uh, to get let's say um, to go to the next stage of development or we know that we have to do this like to be more healthy maybe it's a spiritual practice maybe it's connected with any business project and you want to jump out or you want to travel to India and you're in the country and blah 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 and eventually a person comes back home and when he comes back home the the brain goes oh you're such a good you're, you're such a good boy you had such a long day you did so many things and you know you have to do like some important work to like jump out from the old matrix where you are but the brain tells you no brother today you did enough <laughs> <laughs> today you're so super that you can just relax today you deserve it and tomorrow in the morning you'll start with your spiritual practice you're gonna go to the gym and you'll definitely will start doing that what you wanted to do now so it gives first of all a logical explanation it gives the person a feel you no know, like this emotion that he's tired yeah and then the person if the soul is not conscious enough like yeah i'll rather watch netflix and drink a beer and and they like Phew. and eventually what happens the mind boom totally has the control over the body and the person with his soul cannot do nothing with his reality because he's just too weak and if you're weak you're a slave because if you don't make a decision for yourself the decision for you it's always made by somebody more smarter and more conscious this is the freedom you don't use your freedom others will <laughs> so that's why it's so important for every soul who wants uh, really to experience life in its full depths to understand if you won't make your choices for yourself there will be always who will and of that reason by seeing how the mind manipulates through logic and emotions we have to understand how we can get the control over our avatars and we can get this control exactly by understanding and making clear what are our feelings you know the difference between emotions and feelings so emotions they come through the mind when you have any situation uh, oh I'll give you even more simple you meet a person you see the person the first what appears is the feeling afterwards uh, it just happens fast afterwards we already turn on the logic we turn on the mind we start to analyze think and like uh, in the especially in the West like a person you you meet a person you have a negative feeling inside you see he is fat you see his face is ugly kind of you see, like the small things uh, all the 
and but yet you speak with a person and he starts to say good things or let's say he has a business or he has that and you start to explain yourself logically no maybe that person is not so bad maybe uh, uh because he has this and that and that oh i'm gonna give him a chance but eventually what happens you don't trust your feelings <laughs> you explain yourself why you should be connected with this person or like try to be connected and eventually the person we lie to ourselves we ignore our feelings and we logically explain why we should be connected with him and when this happens so a human blocks his feelings rationally logically explain himself why uh, why he will interact and why he has blocked this and then when this happens usually after that come the emotions so if you block something from your feelings later you get emotions because uh, these emotions of fear anger and everything it only comes through the blocking of feelings if you block your feelings you block the energy and it transforms into emotions so that your mind the brain could manipulate that's why all of the spiritual let's say uh, practitioners tell you to overcome your emotions not to be attached to your logic and not to be attached uh, to the emotions but to be attached with the soul with the feeling if we learn to control uh, to have the connection with our feelings we don't need to be smart we can be wise and then it doesn't matter how logically will a demon or a person who is so mindly developed give us any offerings it will uh, he will never be able to manipulate because the difference between um, a slave very soul and a conscious soul that uh, a soul would never um, how you say a soul will never um, this word predavat trust betray yeah a true soul will never betray himself herself and a robot always betrays himself towards the surrounding reality so literally this special game in kali yuga is learning of uh, trusting yourself and never betraying yourself and understanding that uh, uh, you owe nothing to anybody not even to your parents you don't owe nobody and uh, but until that is not clear <laughs> it's very 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 easy to manipulate every person who follows his mind and who follows the mind he will never have pure powers because his mind blocks the powers it's a perception you, you don't believe in your powers you don't believe in magic you don't have no powers and there's no magic <laughs> so simple so genius and on the opposite the more deeper you understand how let's say powerful you are and how much opportunities you have the more it expands and opens and by using amanita muscaria in exactly the microdosing way uh, it is specialty compared with psychedelic mushrooms that psychedelic mushrooms they guide you to more the thin world or let's say the fourth world uh, the fourth where are the spirits where are the energies but amanita it focuses that we would be connected here right now to this reality in other words uh, the creation of amanita it was specially done to assist people to overcome all of the illusions of the mind and to get the control in this reality so by using it in a microdosing way it increases the level of consciousness the level of peace and when you're working with your soul and trying to make it clear for yourself what does my soul want what is my game like of my soul <laughs> when this will be clear it creates such energy and clearance inside of a human that it doesn't matter which situations adventures happen around him or which people come he easily knows this is my person this is not my person this is my project this is not my project 
this is reality where I want to be. No, this is I don't want to see. <laughs> and putting simple, it, when you have it clear, you have no fear of saying no. <laughs> when you have everything clear, you're not afraid to segregate yourself from other people and to throw away people that you don't need or the experiences that you don't need, the reality that you don't need. But if it's not clear what I want with my soul, through logic, you can make a person go to war and to kill a person from the same culture. You understand? This is demonic. From logic, from emotions. And this is uh, how they control. Through logical, emotional stand of a human, he loses control over his own avatar, and he goes and does what he doesn't want to do. So that's why Amanita, includingly, came to assist humanity in uh, getting the powers back <laughs> uh, over our own body, over our own mind, and uh, over the reality and that is given to us. Because if we as humans won't use the powers and the energy that w that is given, other forces will always abuse it against us. This is just how freedom works. You don't use the freedom that is given to you, it will be abused by other, more, let's say, by other beings uh, who are using their powers and using their freedom. So, Amanita Muscaria has absolutely no psychedelic effect. That's why it's so good exactly to use it in this reality uh, it literally of this reason focuses the consciousness and the attention into solving everything that is here when we're using psychedelic mushrooms it gives our more of higher percent uh, perception of uh, let's say the spiritual world and our eyesight starts to see more thin colors we start to see the energies but with Amanita uh, it just will give you such a clearance and energy uh, which we had when we were four or five years old. When we're very small, we're clean. And we have so much energy that we don't care. We don't want to sleep. We don't want to eat. <laughs> we just want to play around and just do stuff. And this is a normal state for any human. But then we grow up, we get poisoned. We get our minds blocked, shocked. And... Uh, uh, most important, we're taking away the freedom of time. That when we're small, we have our time freedom. We play whatever we want. But then comes kindergarten and they already tell you, no, you cannot play this. You're right now doing this. You're going to eat this shit. You're going to sleep at this time. You have to listen to this. <laughs> and eventually it starts from kindergarten when they're taking away the freedom of time from a child. And when we cannot play with our body how we want, our brains start to be fucked. They're starting to be programmed. Obey here, obey here, obey here, obey here, obey here, obey here. And they tell you, think like this. No, this is like this. This is like this. This is like this. This is like this. Then in school, it continues. In school, they continue to tell you, it's like this. Think like this. No, no, no. Do like this. And eventually, only when the child is small, he has the freedom of time in studying the world, life, and himself. And from the age of four and five, once he gets to the kindergarten, his freedom is taken away, through which is taken away the powers of using the freedom that is given to us. And we get grown-ups that after school, university is just a perfect stupid slave, which has absolutely no idea or how to make himself decisions. He has absolutely no idea on how to organize his life, how he wants. He has no idea how works finances. He has no idea how works communication with other people. He usually has no idea which arts, or let's say, what is the game that his soul wants to share. And eventually we get very stupid people, which are very, very boring. <laughs> All of them are very, very sad. <laughs> And yet, <laughs> they speak so much <laughs> and try to share something. 
when uh, and eventually that's why it's uh, very quite funny uh, for people who are happy and conscious uh, to see people who explain why you should be happy <laughs> and uh, what you need to do to be happy and how much you need to work and how much money you need to do and blah 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 and eventually in front of you is standing some kind of fat person with very ugly face and uh, with a lot of sicknesses <laughs> And you're like, mm-hmm, so yeah, great reality, brother. And he's like, oh. So uh, the body is the reflection of the soul. Always remember that. And uh, I really recommend you never visit fat, ugly doctors. <laughs> never. And never do business also with fat and ugly people. Like, look at the people. The, literally, the body is the reflection on how much the person is controlling the body. If the soul controls the body, the body is beautiful, the face is harmonic, and everything is good. And uh, if the body is fat, ugly, has uh, some kind of... Ch -ch -ch again. Mm -hmm. uh, that the Why all fat people is ugly? Because pain. Imagine... Pain. Yes, imagine like this, as I told you, in Ayurveda, the body reflects of everything what we feel inside. Oh, it's a big soul, it's a big body. I'll say like this, if it's a um, big body, it usually means huge pain, huge suffering, um. huge, like such, um. there was such hard experience like emotions and moments in life that they couldn't express what they feel and they were pushing down this energy pushing down pushing down because when you eat your brain doesn't work normally and what do fat people usually do they just try to block the pain inside because if they don't eat they start to think about the pain that they live through but they don't want to do that they don't want to change they don't want to experience uh, any let's say uh, change and of that reason mm. uh, and of that reason uh, it's literally so important to understand that if a person has overweight it literally just simply means that there's a lot of feelings which were blocked inside and which need to come out until these feelings won't be brought out it will be like very hard <laughs> and uh, we have to understand that everything that we block inside it doesn't disappear if we don't work with it the pain can only come out when we allow it to come out if we don't allow it to come it becomes again as i just said first it becomes a sickness then it becomes a chronic sickness and then it can become like <laughs> a death penalty so, of that reason, we have to understand that our bodies is literally the reflection of our soul. You want to change something, well, just start at least working with your body. Start to work with something that is connected with your avatar. This is important. Not people around are important. You are important. You want to change? Don't focus uh, on trying to help everybody. Just help yourself. You want to see a change in the surrounding reality take care of yourself do what brings you happiness fill yourself with energy and see how magically all around will change so putting simple we can heal from anything but we need to want to heal and once you want to heal you have to be ready to let go of the fears of the mind to let go of the illusions of the barriers that it makes so of that reason um, try to look on people with a clear perception to understand that many people are not happy the majority of people are sick many people have a lot of pain inside and the easiest way of really understanding who is who look at the person look at his face look at his body it will uh, mostly share more than even the words 
that a human shares. And here you can see it perfectly. Here in Arambols are so many beautiful people. Why? <laughs> because everybody are very sincere in their self-development. Everybody are following their own path, are doing the practices, everybody are working upon themselves and trying to use this opportunity and energy that we have here. And that's why everybody are so beautiful. This is a reflection of spirituality. And so really it's so simple. And subconsciously <laughs> we know that. In my country I will organize eventually that all of the politicians will have to lead debates. You no, know, if you want to be a politician you will have to show yourself. I'm going to organize debates uh, with no shirts. So imagine, <laughs> you got it? Imagine politicians will have to like uh, speak naked. No, like you can keep your like pants on, but we would see the body. And imagine uh, <laughs> this fat politician with this big boobs, this guy speaks, uh, I'm for honesty. <laughs> Everybody, I will take care of everybody and everything will be good. And yet this person is overwhelmed with fat. <laughs> you can see his body is so ugly that even when he speaks, nobody will believe. You understand? They're fooling us through logic. If you will put the person naked and make him speak, you will see everything. You will never believe with your soul that this person is a good leader or this person really will share the resources equally or he will take care of everybody nicely. So really by simplifying and seeing how let's say um, uh, the soul is reflected through the body you can already read the whole life of a person. You don't listen, need to listen to him all you need to do is just to look at him and once you see you get the feeling and uh, you understand who is standing in front of you. So yeah, if you want to change for that reason your life, ignore the surrounding world, focus on yourself, focus on the practices and see the change that through your body and your level of energy and happiness, the rest will always follow. You want to heal yourself, heal your soul. You want to solve a problem, find where is the pain hiding hiding from your mind <laughs> which found an explanation why you don't have this pain. So by being sincere with ourselves and by making a focus on our feelings we can uh, really really easily find such a navigation which nobody will be able to break. If you have learned to follow your feelings you become <laughs> invincible. <laughs> So yeah, so for that reason uh, I truly can say that Amanita muscaria is one of those uh, medicine plants which came to us to assist to open the control of our soul over our bodies. If you will learn to divide your soul from your body, you're gonna get those powers and those energies and that reality which you are capable to believe in with your soul. You understand? So it's all about our soul. If your soul develops, your body will adapt to it. If your perception of the reality expands, you get the control over the reality in which you live in. And through that, you get everything what you believe you can get. It's literally, you get everything you believe, you can get what you deserve, and it happens. And if you don't believe that you deserve it, <laughs> it doesn't matter how much logically you will do work, how much logically you'll do that and this, you don't get it. Because it's a game for the soul. You're happy with your soul, you give yourself rewards. You're not happy, doesn't matter how much shit you will do, you won't give yourself <laughs> the reward. So, of that reason, truly, uh, for everybody who's working with Amanita and uh, plant medicines, dig, dig deeper to yourself, dig deeper to your soul, make it clear. You're gonna make it clear, that's it. You, be you will become immune to the matrix, you will become immune to the demons. 
Not a single person with logic or emotions will be able to push you to make something what you don't want. And every soul has a choice. And the choice, which almost everybody forgets, is the opportunity that we have always an opportunity to say no. Humans forget that. They can say no. They always say yes, 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 yes. Like, you want a war? Yes, yes, no, no, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so simple. There's no willpower in the decision. If a person doesn't want something, he doesn't have to do it. Emotions come from logic. This is exactly the spiritual work. And Amanita really helps to increase the feelings and to and the main difference between literally spiritual people or conscious people and an unconscious that the conscious they see aha uh -huh, my mind tries to create this emotion oh, it tries to explain me this and it tries to and you're like hmm no uh feelings um no it's simple um I'll uh, give uh, even such a more deeper maybe I example. So feelings is uh, that attitude which a person has inside when he is doing something. So for uh, there are people, um, let's say, there's uh, a person going uh, to, uh, let's say, there are two girls, they're friends, but one hates each other, she's, I don't know, like popular. And she actually is just uh, connected with her just because she's popular. And they're like together, I don't know, in here and there, but they like the person doesn't like him. There's no connection to that. But uh, through the mind, the girl explains it's like she's popular, she's important, she's there. So I have to be with her. And eventually, for example, comes her birthday and they start to make gifts. And eventually the person uh, is making a gift, but he makes it through logic. He doesn't want to make the gift. He doesn't like the person. But through the logic, she, you prepare a gift and you give it. And eventually this gift, even though that is given, on the inside there's a lie. The uh, attitude. It's all about your attitude, your feeling with which you're doing. So. If you hate the person and you're gonna give him even a beautiful gift, this gift will bring destruction to that person's lives. Even though you did a good thing, but your attitude, your intention was disgusting. And what you shared with your gift is just energy. You shared your disgusting <laughs> energy so that the person would have problems in his life through your gift, even though the gift might be beautiful. And on the opposite, the other person, the intentions are very good. And the intentions is really to help the person to, again, to become alive. You really want the person to feel loved. And in this situation, um, you might be not even given a gift. You might be hitting the person to the face. So he would wake up. But your perception is the best attitude. Your perception, uh, your aspect is that you're making this with the best intentions, even though that in a physical way you might be right now not speaking with the person or ignoring him or doing other stuff, but your intention is literally that you want happiness for the person. You want goodness. And through that, even that one person gave a beautiful gift and the other person might be um, giving you a slap on the face, but the slap maybe on the face is done with true love. It's like, you know, like a father. He loves his children. And at the same time, the children, well, they have to experience their own thing. And so the father, he just provides that type of love and support which is needed because he sees the big picture. Uh, so, intention. Intention is the connection with feelings. If your intentions are sincere, if your feelings are sincere towards what you're doing, it's going to have that magical power of changing. If your intentions are bad, even doing the good thing, you're going to make disaster.
this is how it works so that's why I don't play the game of just doing that it's good love is feeling uh, love is true feeling but if uh, you don't understand let's say if you block the love then it becomes an emotion usually a broken one putting simple we by our nature like God we have eternal love inside of us but to experience it and to open it up we need to understand what it is and what is the difference between true love and ego love so I truly just inspire <laughs> uh, on if when you feel love on trying to express it as when you express it it will increase and love it always brings a warm feeling inside when it happens that is true love and uh, when there is uh, love that comes through the logic and emotions it doesn't have any power mm -hmm. Om Namah so just try to follow uh, the warm feeling on the inside and love will expand and try not to do anything without this feeling inside even though you think logically it's good don't do it if you don't feel it so simple yes Pete two questions mm -hmm. one where do yep. I get more I'm it <laughs> and two um, uh, what mixes and doesn't mix with them for instance if you're mm -hmm. taking them regularly and micro dosing yeah I mean normal like psilocybin mushrooms, you're microdosing. Maybe you take them one or two. You take them for a day, and then you don't take them for three days, and then you take them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a schedule because otherwise you get um, habituated, and you don't really experience the. the uh, you, you need to double the dose every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. For instance, I found myself thinking: Should I drink coffee with this? Um, can I take other mushrooms? Does it matter if I have a beer? All of these things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, can you speak a bit about Yeah, the with joy. So for, with Amanita, what is cool, for, it literally adapts to anything. It, it, because uh, when you have the energy, you, through your body, can use whatever you want. No, you can get any experience. And with Amanita, like uh, there's traditions that they even make it like in alcohol. Like um, in uh, in Russia, for example, quite a spread out method that um, you would um, uh, put the Amanita, like say through the alcohol, and you would have it, and people would use it like medicine in drops. So uh, it goes actually nicely. Also with alcohol, there's no problem. Uh, amanita, it works with, uh, just imagine that it's like a booster uh, for you of your consciousness and strength and when you're in energy you can use anything what you want when you're in power and control you can eat whatever you want you can use whatever you want and Amanita it goes very very good with all of the plant medicines so in a simple way Amanita goes good with Psalatsabin Amanita goes nicely with Ayahuasca Amanita goes with everything because uh, it's just such a healing plant what gives you energy and when you have this energy you can do whatever you want and I inspire that if with your soul you want to do something do it and at the same time uh, thanks to Amanita you will see where's your automatic you no know, like habits and uh, which habits you want to change and where is maybe hiding the pain so um, I recommend through the Amanita microdosing just to trust yourself if it's interesting for you to drink a beer drink a beer if it's interesting drink a coffee do it perceive look look how you feel look which answers come don't block yourself it's most important just make conclusions like blocking experience it, it brings nothing it's better to get the experience and just to analyze it because every experience it comes through some kind of a desire of the soul of the inside and when it happens we should uh, just uh, we came here first of all for the experience so uh, of that reason simple way to remember plants and plants go perfect together
plants and chemistry can also work together but chemistry and chemistry this is the biggest disaster so if you use plants you can literally use them with almost everything and the best teacher is you the best teacher is your feeling and by getting this new experience making conclusions this what allows afterwards already change something the habit and etc because a habit it is exists usually of something what is happening on the inside people would like to drink alcohol not because they like the taste of alcohol no for example but uh, typically it's because uh, it gives energy it subconsciously gives you a boost and people like to smoke or to use anything or to eat sweet stuff or whatsoever simply because it's a lack of energy inside this is a desire for a person to jump out from the reality that he's stuck in and through that we're trying to find some kind of energy which would give us this jump and of that reason it's normal and it's totally wonderful for just to understand this process